It's believed to be the world's toughest adventure race, the Sony Polar Challenge. A 350-mile team skiing trek to the magnetic North Pole. Competitors must cross one of the planet's most extreme environments, braving temperatures as low as minus 50 degrees Celsius, on a journey that will take even the fastest teams up to two weeks to complete. For the 2006 competition, 15 teams of three will trek on skis, pulling their own supplies in 120-pound sledges called pulks. They will have to navigate the route themselves and work out how long to stop and rest each day. To be in with a chance of taking the winner's prize, they need to ski for at least 12 hours per day. Matty McNair is the world's most experienced female polar guide and is abundantly clear about the dangers the competitors will face trekking in the Arctic conditions. The biggest fear is probably polar bears because that's such an unknown element to them. And they're going right now, um, in a couple of days, they're going to be going right across Polar Bear Pass where a lot of polar bears are migrating. So they're pretty nervous about bears. There have been a lot of questions last night about bears. The second one is navigation, their navigation skills and making sure that they don't end up in a dead end or going 20, 30 miles out of their way, which will really put them out of the race. All of the competitors are amateurs who go through rigorous preparation courses in Austria before they're allowed to attempt one of the longest races in sport. Part of their training includes polar bear drills to ward off the Arctic predator. God bless the polar bears! Oh. Contestants also perform the infamous icebreak drill, where they plunge into freezing water, then have to get themselves out again and fully warm to avoid hypothermia. The drill imitates the conditions competitors face if they happen to break through thin ice. Nice one. Great effort. Well done. If you're doing this in the dark, feel for this Then the teams fly off to Canada's most northerly community, Resolute Bay. Here, the knowledge gained in Austria is further reinforced with lectures and practical training drills. Finally, it's off to the starting line. But this is no ordinary competition. The teams have to trek for five days and 65 miles before they even get to the official start line. They're so excited. You can just feel the energy and there's a good competitive energy, but there's also a lot of compassion for all the other teams, and they're ready to go. They've been practicing their skills every day. They've gotten a little faster. Their tent skills are much better, and uh, they're going to have a wonderful time out there. The race then starts in earnest. The first section of the journey will take the competitors from Polaris Mine on a 110 nautical mile trudge across sea ice to Bathurst Island to checkpoint one. This is one of the most demanding sections of the race, but Team Cotswold have a navigational trick up their sleeves. It's going well. We've, uh, we've taken a bit of a sneaky route this morning, I think, and put some, put some distance between the us and the team that were behind us. But um, yeah, it seems to be going quite well so far. Feet are bearing up just about. I've got one blister on my right foot, which actually might be requesting another pair of boots. But apart from that, they're all, they're all fairly small. The route crosses the dreaded Polar Bear Creek, where Team Gosh It's Cold, who are raising money for London's Great Ormond Street Children's Hospital, believe they heard strange noises at night. When we were camping on top of the island, we didn't really think that there was a bear presence. So we slept really well. Last night, no, no, no. There were bear paw prints everywhere. And last night, I think I was out of the tent once with a shotgun, but there was a sound. I mean, I could swear there was a bear outside. But I think on reflection, maybe it was just the ice creaking under the tent.
After five days of racing, it's team Breaking Trail who arrive first at checkpoint one. The team, made up of Alex and Jeremy Hinton and Andrew Vinson, arrive at base after slugging out the last 40 miles in 21 hours. Team Gosh It's Cold, who led for a long period of time, follow in four hours later. As the team set off for checkpoint two near King Christian Island, Team ATP are making steady progress. The group, comprising Captain Tim Tottenham, Simon Edmondson and Mike Dan, who are raising money for cancer research, arrive at the final checkpoint almost 12 hours ahead of the rest and are contemplating their final assault. We uh, are planning to try and do this in two stages, although whether or not that will prove possible, well, uh, we shall see. Either two, two stages, 35 miles apiece, or we're going to do it in three days and try and divide it into around 20, 25 mile stages. Um, and hopefully cross the finish line in front. The ATP team are true to their word, and after 11 days, 15 hours and five minutes, they cross the finish line to win the 2006 Sony Polar Challenge. Gosh, it's cold, finished second, with breaking trail in third.